Hey guys, welcome to parabolas in vertex form. Okay, so we've studied standard form parabolas, but now we're shifting gears. And what's really nice about vertex form is it tells us the vertex. This is going to tell us what our vertex is, making it easier to plot the vertex and the axis of symmetry. It's much faster. H and K is the vertex. So that general form is Y equals A times the quantity X minus H squared plus K. H and K is the vertex. And I want you to be very careful. Look at the sign of H and look at that operation. Those are going to always be opposites. Okay? So take away H. You're taking away H dollars. If I took five dollars from you, I'm still taking a positive amount. So you've got to be very careful. Even though this operation is subtraction, that value is positive. So just remember, whatever that operation is, H is going to be the opposite. And you'll see that in the next example. H is going to shift your function H units either to the right or to the left depending on what your H value is and that shift is horizontal. K is going to shift your function up or down based on how many K units you have. It's K units up or K units down. So if K is positive you move up, if K is negative you move down. The axis of symmetry is great. All you need to know is whatever your H value is, that's the vertical line for the axis of symmetry. So let's look at some examples. In this first example, we're going to graph y equals the negative 1 4 times the quantity x plus 2 squared plus 5. Step number one, you always want to identify your variables, a, h, and k. Okay? And you've got to determine what they do. How are they affecting the parabola? a is negative and it's 1 4, so a negative a value means your parabola opens down. 1 4 is between 0 and 1, so the parabola is going to be wide. H is negative 2. Now, here's the point. It's positive 2, but H is negative. Because when you subtract a negative number, you get positive. So just keep in mind, whatever this sign is here, this operation, H is opposite. So identify my variables. So we're going to actually move 2 units left and 5 units up. So we're going to plot the vertex now and the axis of symmetry. The vertex is negative 2, 5. So there's negative 2, 5. The axis of symmetry is that x-coordinate. x equals negative 2. Now, evaluate two values for x. Usually, evaluate points that are one to the left and one to the right of your axis of symmetry. Because if you plug those in, you will get a value of 1. So if I always pick a value that's one to the right and to the left, or to the left of my axis of symmetry, when I simplify here and square it, I'll get 1. Now, because I have this fraction, uh, it can be a little more challenging, so I'm actually going to use 0. Because when I put 0 in here, I get 2 squared, which is 4. Negative 1 fourth of 4 is 1, okay? And it's going to be the opposite, so negative 1 plus 5 is 4. So I plot 0, 4. What's great about this is I am 1, 2 units away, and I plotted 4. So now I move to the right or left 2 units, 1, 2, and I plot 4 mirror images and I connect my graph with a smooth smooth curve. So again, I would pick values to the right or to the left of the uh, axis of symmetry by one unit. Now I didn't hear because of this fraction and I don't like working with fractions, I want to get a whole number response or a whole number output. All right, so now we're going to graph y equals 2 times the quantity x plus 1 squared minus 3. And I'm really focusing on this age value here, making these two examples plus. Because notice how you have plus here, and when I identify my variables, I have minus 1 right here. Okay, so look, sign is positive, h is negative. They're opposites. Whatever that operation is, make h the opposite. You'll never go wrong. a is 2, k is 3. So the parabola is going to open up, it's going to be more narrow, it's moving to the left one and down three from our parent function. That's the idea when we compare this always to the parent function. I plot my vertex and I plot my axis of symmetry. The vertex is negative one, negative three. Negative one, negative three. There's my vertex. My axis of symmetry is whatever h is. h is negative one, there's my vertical line through negative one. Now, I don't have a fraction here, so I'm actually going to pick 1 to the right and 1 to the left. So watch, if I plug 0 in, 0 plus 1 
is 1, 1 squared is 1, times 2 is 2, minus 3 is negative 1. So look, I pick a point 1 to the right of the axis of symmetry, and I got 1. Let's pick 1 to the left. Negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1, times 2, minus 3. And notice, the same output. The same output. One unit away, I plotted negative 1 on the right. One unit away to the left, I plot negative 1. And that's all I need to make that nice, smooth curve. So make it easier on yourself when you plot, plot vertex form. Pick x's in step three that are one unit away from your axis of symmetry. If you have fractions, whatever your denominator is, try to get this to pick an x where the denominator or the, where this number here comes out is the same as your denominator, so you can simplify. So the next two examples write equations in standard form. Okay, so I have two parabolas in vertex form. So this is actually pretty easy. What we're going to do is we're going to square out x minus 1. So I rewrote it as x minus 1 times x minus 1 here. Then I multiply or distribute. Some of you call that FOIL. And so I multiply that out. I get x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 9. Distribute the 4 through, which is what I've done here. I've distributed the 4 through, and in the last step, Combine like terms, 4 and 9, which make 13. So this parabola in vertex form has a standard form equal to 4x squared minus 8x plus 13. Now, when we get to y equals the quantity x minus 3 squared plus 6, okay, again, I'm going to multiply x minus 3 times x minus 3 out, and I'm going to add that 6 here. So I go ahead and do this in red, and I get x squared minus 6x plus 9, plus 6. Combining like terms, I get 9 and 6 make 15. So x squared plus negative 6x plus 15 is the standard form of that vertex form. So now in factored form, this is our other part of this that we're going to sneak an example in here. So y equals a times the quantity x minus p times x minus q. It's very important to realize that P and Q are the x-intercepts. The axis of symmetry is going to be P plus Q over 2. Okay, so these are the two big things we have. So let's look at an example. Graph Y equals 2 times the quantity X plus 3 times the quantity X minus 1. So step number 1, identify P and Q. P equals negative 3. Notice how it's in standard form is at minus P, and here it's plus P. So that means it has to be negative. Q is going to be 1. So those are our x-intercepts, so let's plot them. Negative 3, 0, 1, 0. The axis of symmetry here is always halfway between those. So you take negative 3 plus 1 divided by 2. That equals negative 1. So there's my axis of symmetry at negative 1. It's also the x-coordinate of my vertex. So I plug that negative 1 back into my function, and I get negative 8. So my vertex is negative 1, negative 8. So there's that vertex, and I connect the points with a smooth curve. So factored form tells us the x-intercepts, and it doesn't tell us the vertex. So let's look at one more example of that. In this last example, we're going to graph x, the quantity x minus 3 times x minus 7. Step number one in factored form. Identify p and q. Those are our x-intercepts. 3, 0, <coughs> excuse me, 7, 0. So I plot 3, 0, 7, 0, and my axis of symmetry is halfway between. 3 plus 7 over 2. That's 5. Axis of symmetry goes through 5. I plug 5 into the original function to get the y-coordinate of my vertex. So I plot 5, negative 4, because I plugged in 5 for add the x's and simplified. So I plot 5, negative 4, which is here, and connect my graph, graph with a smooth curve. So that's factored form. Okay, so if you guys have any questions or comments, you can uh, write them below or email me at nicholas.bennett at dc.gov. We'll see you next time. Thanks.